we can oh, start. Okay. Uh, well, I was I was born and raised in New York. New York. I'm well. I was born in Harlem. Wow. In Harlem, New York. But you know, I went from Harlem Hospital to the Bronx. <laughs> My goodness. So I grew up in the Bronx. Yeah. So, so many of the artists, R&B artists that we we talk to, they they all seem to be more on the south and, and stuff. But not many, apart from the um, uh, hip hop stars, are from New York. But what was it like growing up in New York back back in the day? New York was fun. You know, I when people ask me that, I always look at New York as it it has always been, and I can say that now that I'm older. But it's always been like a boot camp. It, New York actually will make you tough. And I tell my nieces and nephews today who wasn't born there, I say, y'all need a little bit of New York. Y'all should have come to New York. Because these kids nowadays, they can't do nothing. They lazy, you know. But we had, we had a good time. We walked to the bus. We walked once, sometime two, two miles to catch the train, you know. But it was all wow. about fun. And think about money, you know, because half of us didn't really have anything to compare it to. We didn't have any money, you know. We we didn't have like real role models growing up all the time, you know. So it was just we were just happy being kids. Wow. And, and then when it comes to, so, I mean, growing up in in those times, because I remember speaking to Tam, interviewing Tammy Lucas, and she was talking to me about the music <laughs> scene. Tammy Lucas. <laughs> yeah. Oh uh, my. Uh, Miss Tammy Lucas. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know she did um, um, use your heart with, with the nephews with you with you guys, but she, yes, yeah, she did. Yeah, yeah she, but I remember she, when we when I spoke interviewed her, she, she talked about how lovely it was growing up in New York. The music, you know, everyone was out, and, and it was just the, the sort of the vibe and stuff. But even Harlem was the Apollo. Was it still famous back then when you were growing up in Harlem? Was, did you realize how popular it was? Oh, absolutely. Um, Showtime at the Apollo. Well, it wasn't Showtime at the Apollo at the time. That's when it um, transitioned to television. But it was um, Amateur Night at the Apollo. And that was like the big thing for anybody who was inspired to, to be a singer or a musician of some sort. Um, yes, absolutely. I, actually, my mom used to take me there every Wednesday, and I believe the cheapest ticket was twelve dollars, and and the higher ticket price was twenty five. So, for some reason, we always found a way to get that twelve dollars. And my mom would take me there every week, and she would say, "Are you ready?" And I was like, "No," because that that crowd is so brutal. Wow. If you've never been to Amateur Night at the Apollo, like, if you're whack, they will tell you. And that's just New York, period. Wow. If you're garbage, they don't care. Eight to 80 blind cripples crazy. <laughs> if you're whack, they're going to throw you off stage. So with, with the Sandman. Yeah, the Sandman. So after about maybe 10 visits to the Apollo Theater, my mom asked me, she said, are you ready to, you know, for amateur night? I said, no, I don't ever think I'm going to be ready. Or oh, to said, actually perform or to just. Yeah, to do amateur night at the Apollo. Oh. And I was scared because of that audience was brutal. And my mom said to me, are you ready? And I said, no, mom, I'm not ready. Mm -hmm. And I said, I don't ever think I'm going to be ready. When I come on this stage, I'm going to be a guest. So I spoke into my own life. Wow. <laughs> and it happened. Yeah, how old were you then? Around what that when that that I, I was about 12. 11, 12. Did did you already have the the, the passion to sing or what, what was it? What, what? That passion, I had that passion um since I was a little kid. And I would tell uh, my grandbaby today, I'm like, you know, when I was young, I, I kind of felt connected to entertainment of all kind. Like I used to love watching the Miss America contest, you know, just to see the talent portion of the show. Okay. And, you know, while kids my age were buying ice cream, whenever I got a hold of some money, I was buying records, 45s. Wow. <laughs> who, who were you into? Who were, who, which, which artists? 
were you um, inspired by Ben back then? Oh, my God. Um, well, I grew up listening to blues. My mom um, played a lot of blues. Um, Sam Cooke, Otis Redding, um, uh, Bobby Womack played in my house, oh. Teddy Bass. But the person who really inspired me when I was little, little, have to be Stacey Lattisaw. I don't know her. Oh, oh my God. Yes, yeah, Stacey Lattisaw. Um, the Dream Girls, the original Dream Girls soundtrack, Jennifer Holiday was a big influence. Stephanie Mills, of course. Wow. And there was a young lady um, that used to do this off Broadway play called Mama I Want to Sing. And her name was Desiree Coleman. Well, now she's Kadish Coleman. Her name is like really <laughs> weird. But her, I knew her as Desiree Coleman Jackson. She was married to um, Mark Jackson, a basketball player who's now a coach. And she was in this play called Mama, I Want to Sing. And I believe she was about 16. And I was probably 10 or nine. And I used to look at her like she was so beautiful back then with this huge voice. Wow. And I was, oh my God, like she had like this beautiful falsetto voice that just kind of carried like she would go into her falsetto voice and then to her big voice and I'm like wow <laughs> I was so like amazed at that but um definitely a, a lot of people inspired me and my brother my brother was like a singer singer like he actually did a lot of quartet Oh. And I, he inspired me a lot too, and he never even knew it. Wow! I mean, but but back back then, you you have these artists who, because I, I grew up loving Michael Jackson, and the, and the, but I never oh. thought I'd ever sing. But I'm wondering, <laughs> being inspired by them and and already speaking into your life about being a, a guest on the Apollo, where was the opportunity to actually sing and learn how learn the craft back in those early days? Well, well, in school. In school okay. and at home, you know, we had a lot of um, like talent programs. We had, you know, the Glee Club. We had a band class. We had talent shows in our school. And I've noticed they don't have a lot of that stuff, a lot of creative stuff going on now. Um, but that really, really helped me a whole lot, you know, as far as being on stage and and not being afraid of the stage because the stage can be a very scary place to be. Yeah, You know, everybody think it's easy. And even when you're a seasoned artist, it's still, it's scary. But yeah. it, in the strangest way, it's so scary, but it's your comfort zone. Wow. Those people in the audience, they scare you a little bit, but those are the same people that give you so much comfort. Wow. Yeah, so. but I wonder how much that is inspired by seeing the Apollo and seeing the crowd and seeing how the artists, you know, you know, had to be at the best and and probably you know almost thinking that that could happen at any time. Well, back then, because that audience was so cruel, <laughs> I know the older I got, I know I'm like, you know, they would really love the Sopranos. Like, you can be like, the worst singer, but if you <laughs> up in the track. Yeah. or if you hit like a soprano note they like Woo! Woo! you know I'm like it's not me they they toned them they don't know what they talk about <laughs> they just was loving the bigger voices so okay they, you know, it's okay it's okay <laughs> that really taught me that everybody is just not gonna like you yeah so that prepared me for the world. Hmm. I, 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 and I'm wondering, because when, you, when you, you're growing up, I mean, did being a recording artist ever seem achievable? Because, you know, it's not like, you know, in the 90s we had young groups like, you know, the boys or High Five. Mm -hmm. So we, you, you, you could think, oh, like, if they can make it, we can make it. But back when you were coming up, you know, you know, Motown seemed quite a distance. I mean, the Jacksons, I mean, I don't know who you would have thought how the dream of being an artist would have ever seen realistic back in those days. What were you, who, who did you look at and think, if they could do it, I could do it? 
Um, it was Shanice Wilson. And back then, Shanice Wilson didn't even have a deal. She was just doing star search. Like she was trying to do it just like we were. But she was definitely my inspiration as far as seeing somebody visually yeah. and saying, wow, oh, man, if, if, if she could do that, I know I could do this. You know, so I follow her career and she was probably, her and Stacey Lattisol was probably the two of the youngest talented singers who had record deals so young. Yeah. You know, so if I had to choose anybody, it would have been Shanice Wilson. Wow. <laughs> yeah, okay. I mean, before she even came about then, did you, did you have an idea of what you wanted to do then? Did you think about becoming, because these are solo artists you spoke about, were you thinking about doing it, going alone and stuff? Or what was that journey? I always felt like it was going to happen one way or the other. Like, um, I used to love groups like the Jones Girls. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Oceans. Of course, like the Clark sisters, but I was so young listening to the Clark sisters. I didn't really understand that kind of singing because mm -hmm. I, I I went to church, but I wasn't like the church girl who who parents made you go to church for five days a week. You know, I just <laughs> I went because, you know, I wanted to do something that day on a Sunday with my aunt yeah. and I begged, let me go to church with her. So. Wow. So I ended up there, but it had to be like those, like the Jones girls, the emotions. And then it was a group called the Jets. It was a group called, um, oh my God. I love the OJs. Okay. I yeah. love a lot of those crooner, the temptations, of course. I mean, how can you even inspire to do this thing without loving those those older bands you know but then watching those older bands did you did you initially think i want to form a group or did you not think being a solo artist on stage by yourself well i always wanted to do a group oh wow i always up uh, because my mom had me all over the place like i was singing school and in middle school and it just seemed to be more fun like you know in middle school, we had like these talent shows or whatever. And then they, they would always pair like three people together, okay. you know, or people over here, one person over there. And it was just so much fun. And, you know, we're doing rehearsals and stuff like that. So, yeah, I, I would say that, you know. Wow. That's always strange because I, I always would assume everyone would want to be their own star, their own person. And, 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 and unless... You had good, you grew up with friends who could sing and you kind of came together. I, I, I wouldn't have thought that would have been, a, not a priority, but that would have been a sense of this is how I want it to go. Well, that's, of course, that's how it happened. But I, I, don't, I think it's, it's, a, it's all a matter of what you want out of it. I never really wanted to be a star. Okay. I didn't look at it for that reason. I, my motivation was, I didn't want to be poor anymore. <laughs> I, you know, I wanted to do something for my mom. Like I wanted to change my situation. And plus wow. I was young, you know, I, I was a teen parent. So that was my, my fire to wow. want to do something that would make people forget about the fact that I was even a teen parent, you know, because where I'm from, you know, they looked at me crazy and I felt bad. Like I felt bad. I felt like a disappointment to my mom and my family mm -hmm. and to myself. So I was, I just wanted to do something that made everybody happy and proud. Wow. Yeah. Cause I, 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 cause I went to your site and I saw, and I know that you, you, you've got a, you've been promoting teen pregnancy. Um, I, I didn't realize that you, you said you had two children by 17 um so even before you started the group and and and, and i do wonder how supportive your mom might have been in in not being disappointed but saying okay i'm going to support encourage you as you're doing uh, pursuing your music career how was that for you it was amazing my mom 
was everything. Like she always supported. Now, when before SWV, I I used to sing with this group called the Diva Girls. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know where they are, but I was actually the lead singer of the Diva Girls, right? But my mom and we did like this um, this Snapple jingle. I don't know what happened to it. I don't know. I just don't know. But that was like the first studio experience I I ever had. And um, my mom has always been there. She's wow. always been my champion. She's always said, you're going to do amazing. Like, I was just always amazing to my mom. She just always just supported me, you know? She she wanted her baby girl. To, she saw the vision. She saw the dream. She, she saw what I wanted to do. I mean, a lot of people with, with you know, I've even spoken to artists who whose parents wanted to create, have a, a career, but when they had the kid, they had them they put it on the back burner. You were the opposite. I mean, you had two young children at 17, but still were pursuing a career. I, I, what was the drive? And Because that's that's a story in itself. But how did you not see having children at a young age by yourself as a hindrance in order to pursue a career that is a challenge to get in on the best of days? Well, I, I'm going to just put this out here. Like, I am not by any way promoting teen pregnancy um, because every story is not always the same. Mm. Did I have challenges? Absolutely. I will never sit here and say, oh my God, you know, I have my children, you know, and, and I have now I have this fabulous career. It was nothing like that. I spent a lot of days crying, wanting to be with my kids and I, I couldn't, I had obligations, but I knew that those obligations would give us a better life. Mm -hmm. So I had to choose. When you talk about sacrifice, this industry is a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. It's a sacrifice. Like you lose one thing to gain something else, but you need both. So you have to figure out how to balance. I was a Western Union mom. I would talk to my kids on the phone on the, all the time. I would send letters. I would send cards. You know, um, I would do last minute pop up visits for one day or a few hours just to see my kids, you know, but wow. I'm so thankful. Like I had the crazy support system, mm -hmm. like my mom and my sisters held me down because had it not been for them, I probably wouldn't have been able to do what I'm doing. Yeah. Did, did, was there any time before you, you formed SW that you that you ever thought maybe maybe not maybe I just get a job at a grocery store and, and raise my kids or was there any of <laughs> okay. I never felt that once I felt like it was happening for real and it just happened so fast I was like oh no I, I went on running <laughs> it was so I got into the situation I felt like that <laughs> okay okay but because now I had something to compare it to. Like, you know, okay, so I'm living in the Bronx. I'm growing up. I got two kids at 17 years old. And I got this career. I'm able to go on the road, make a few dollars, take care of my kids, pay some bills. But it's like, I didn't really understand business and how it works and how lonely the road is. Like, the road is a lonely place. Mm -hmm. It's very lonely. And I spent a lot of my years lonely and crying, you know, because I felt like I, there was a point where I felt like I didn't make the right decision. Mm. Um, wow. But then I have to, you know, it's emotional, you know, when you're used to, I'm, I'm very close to my family. Like we've always been close. So when you get on the road and it's like, oh my God, you do a show and you go in your hotel room, you're, you're by yourself every, all the time. And how disrespectful they are to artists like us, like the older seasoned artists, and they be so quick to say old school. And, and that's fine. But I, I, I look at that now as a badge of honor. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe to the channel, but most importantly, to press the notification bell so that you can be notified when we do have a new interview. Loads to come, but thanks a lot for watching.